The Defense Headquarters of Abuja has indicated that 603 former Boko Haram fighters will be reintegrated to their communities, I beg your pardon, by June 2020 after undergoing Operation Safe Corridors, the de-radicalization, rehabilitation and reintegration. The DHQ's Defense Media Operations stated this at a press conference on Friday. It noted that through the same safe corridor, 280 clients have successfully undergone the program and reintegrated into the society, while 25 of this number were repatriated to the Nigeria Republic. To look at the implication of this move, we're joined live now by Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo, retired, who is a security expert. Thank you, Air Vice Marshal, for joining us on the news. And how are you doing this evening, sir? Very well, thank you. Very well. Could this move to reintegrate this Boko Haram fighters have come at a worst time? Your thoughts, please. Um, I, th I think we have a problem um, at the defense headquarters level and also at the federal government level. Um, to do things like this properly, you have to carry everybody along. Um, the last time a number of them were rehabilitated after having been trained or uh, we have not heard anything there's no follow-up on them to show that they've actually been uh, good citizens in the country and so on now another group have come out and even uh, at a time like this where there's lockdown where there's COVID-19 and so on and so on um, it's not exactly good to say people should stay indoors, lock their houses, and then you release uh, some elements into the environment without proper information as to what has been done. I think there is a lot more that uh, uh, the relevant agencies need to do to carry, especially um, other, the rest of the country, the southern part of the country, along with them. Interesting, you just said for the other parts of the country, especially the southern parts of the country, to be carried along. Now, many people have argued and put forward that the government seems to be very insensitive. Um, how do you react to this when it comes to this development? Well, like I said, insensitivity comes across to you when uh, fears are being raised and certain parts of uh, the government and the defense fail to, to allay these fears. And they just continue to carry on with their own program, which seems to uh, not quite make sense to the rest of the country. You see, de radicalization is a very complex program. Um, when you have an arm robber, he goes to prison, you punish him, he comes out. He may learn not to be another criminal again, but in the process, he may meet people who will even convince him and show him ways uh, to survive, and then he comes out. It was criminal. That's what's been fun about the, you know, the, you know, prison system. Now, regarding has been done somewhere else. Now, somebody's mind has been taken over. Religion is a very powerful opium that some people take it, and uh, you just can't get it out of them. So it is this idea that you are now trying to manage under concepts that you have not made clear to the rest of the country. And you are taking it as just another, you know, school program. You bet them some uniforms, you feed them well, and then you talk to them. And you see, there are people in this country, even military of, uh, families, I won't even talk about men, I'll talk about families, whose husbands were, you know, brutally eliminated, gruesomely eliminated by these chaps. And so you're now saying that by just keeping them somewhere for a few months, a couple of months, they've now become good citizens and they're not going to be punished. You see, crime and punishment go hand in hand. And people need to see that uh, those who committed some crime have found. That's why even in South Africa, we had the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, where people come out and actually um, offer apologies and also really show remorse for that which they did in the past. We are not getting this from this group of gentlemen who are suddenly being treated with kid gloves and are going to be rehabilitated and whatever that means, because rehabilitation is not just sending him to his village. It means that you are probably going to give him some stipend and every other thing like that. Meanwhile, the soldiers who are fighting are still fighting. We need to be very careful about this. 
Now, the whole credibility and the efficacy of the process involved in the program of Operation Safe Corridor has been questionable for quite a while in some sectors in, in, the, in, the, in the country. A, a few reactions. And now, given, I want to believe that with the time span that this erstwhile killer's terrorists have totally been transformed into well-adjusted citizens, because these are concerns, these are valid concerns citizens are having and on, this, on this program with the federal government, the Operation Safe Corridor. How do we going to measure how well adjusted they become, how well transformed they become for them to be reintegrated back into the society? Well, that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it is not enough for, uh, let's say, the Minister of Defense to say they are satisfied. These people did not offend just the Ministry of Defense. They offended Nigerians to the core. We saw videos of the gruesome killings of their fellow human beings. Somebody who has been radicalized to that level has to go through a serious process of radicalization. We've seen people who, who get hooked on drugs and then they go for rehabilitation and they still go back to it. We see all kinds of crimes being taking place. Now, this when you get to that level when you can slaughter human beings in whole blood in the name of religion. You've gone to a level of radicalization that, has, that is not going to be easy to just um, wipe off like that with the lectures and um, whatever it is they were doing there. So it is the Ministry of Defense that needs to come out and even show the Nigerian public what exactly they did in this process of radicalization, um, and that has brought in these issues. We, if we go to the United States, and when we go to um, some of the people they're holding, the United States, um, they're, they're holding some people for years, you know. They're holding some radical elements for years until they can get things properly identified and sorted out. Uh, I think the, there is some rush that um, we need to be wary of. The, the war is on. It's not over yet. And we know of sleep agents. The, the sleep agents are people who have been programmed to go and just fit into society until a time when they are called back into action. And the call back into action can be as simple as a recitation of something on radio, on television, and then they're back into action. And now they're behind the fighting lines. So you have your troops in around, you know, the Medigree axis trying to fight Boko Haram. And you have some other people behind them who can just wake up one day and be, begin to take their own from the rear. This is, the, this is, a, this is a, my fears, and I think uh, the fears of a lot of people who are talking against us now. Finally, Avian, do you think this might boomerang and the federal government might end up re regretting this move? Uh, anything is possible. Anything is possible. You see, when you have, you have, um, even when we go back to First World War, Second World War, and so on, when you, when you take on a group of people, a certain name, and you capture them, you hold them in abeyance until the end of the war, and then you decide on what to do with them. But this is an ongoing crisis that has taken like forever to, to resolve. And so that's the question. Why the rush to release these people? Um, to my mind, I pray it doesn't, but then uh, it doesn't look good to me. Retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Balibo, thank you for your time and for your contribution on the news. Thank you.